record of this. Um, so we're going to look at chapter two, uh, make sure everybody understands. I did send you an email as, uh, about kind of what I would expect out of lesson one. You know, the idea of what data type would you pick to store stuff is a big thing for us. You don't want to have to be looking it up. Like I said, you don't have to memorize the limits, but you should know, you know, again, if it's going to need a fraction, you know, make it a float or a double. Again, floats are a little smaller, but they're still pretty big. The problem with using float when you're first learning is that some of the functions that are built in, some of the libraries that are built in to Java already, they're going to return a double. And so if you declare your um, variable as a float instead, when it, you're going to get an error there because it's trying to return a double, which is bigger, into a float. Now to do that, in the next chapter, it talks about converting. Uh, you can explicitly say, I want to change this from this into this. Okay, and we'll take a look at that next uh, chapter. But for right now, again, integers, uh, doubles, Boolean, char, are all uh, ones that you should be, string, you should all be, uh, you should be familiar with for right now. Remember that string starts with a capital letter. All the other ones are primitive data types and they start with small letters when you declare them, like when you print double, you can later on, there is a class called double, okay, with a capital D. It's different than what the small d one is, okay? And later on in the semester, we can talk a little bit about those and their usage. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the scanner. You need to become familiar with that. You're gonna use it in almost every program you do. Uh, we're gonna make sure that you're putting in your internal documentation. And again, that we get user-friendly and programmer-friendly programs. Uh, and again, I'll be really strict early on because I want you to write these programs in a certain way, okay? Uh, even if you, you've programmed before, please follow the format that we're, I'm going to bring to you uh, so we can ensure that when we go out into the real world or you move on to Dr. Al Hashimi's course, that you have the knowledge base to do things that get more and more complicated, more and more abstract. Uh, again, our goal in this class is get to the point where you can create your own, like, Early on, you, the stuff we're doing, we do in the main and we don't really create objects of our own, okay? Uh, later on, you're gonna be able to uh, create whole objects. Everything in the world, okay, uh, we, can cr we can define as an object. Right now, we're gonna do procedural programming so that you guys can get familiar with the three different procedures that we write most all programs with. But later on, you're gonna get to play almost God, okay, in your programs, small letter G, uh, where you can create, you should be able to create a car, you can create a printer, you can create a person, an animal, whatever. And the, all these things will have certain attributes, okay, that you'll have to set. And everybody that creates an animal from your program will have the same attributes. In other words, they might have color, they might have something like birthday, they could have, uh, what is their height? Well, everything, you know, a printer is an object, a computer can be an object, a worm could be an object, a whale, a sea, a country, uh, anything that you can think of in the material world, we can recreate in the digital world. And that's our eventual goal, okay? Um, so today, I thought we'd go through chapter two. We're gonna write another program. We probably won't be here for the full time. Oh wait, you guys only do an hour and fifth, let's see, 9.30 to 10.45. So we might be here for the whole time in your case. 
Remember, you guys owe me a, an hour a week, okay? So, anyway, any problems you guys have for me? When I say guys, I mean ladies and gentlemen, okay? Just kind of, I'm an informal kind of guy. Nobody has any problems? You're all doing okay? All right. So I'm going to start sharing my screen now. And we're going to go like that. We'll go like that. And you should see my screen changing as I go here. And start net beans. Reduce this down to just an icon. <coughs> And again, you should follow along. You should be opening up NetBeans now, and then you can write this program. This is one of your homework programs. This isn't a test one. This one is an actual program that's part of your homework. So I'll give you a second here to get to where I'm at. Um, I haven't had too many emails lately that I think everybody's gotten NetBeans and Java working at this point. Am I right? Is there anybody here that is not working? Well, that's a good sign. All right. So we're over here on file, new project. And then once again, we don't use Maven or Gradle. It's got to be Ant. And we hit next. Finish. Come on, you can do it. There we go, finally kicks it over. And always as, you, oh man, I'm gonna close this and get a new one. Well, I guess I could do this, I'll show you. I think I can get it to do it here. Rename, did it. Also rename the chat project folder. Yes, I wanna do that. And I need to change it to, I'm gonna call this uh, Acme uh, Cylinder. I might already have a file like that too, let's see. Nope, there we go. That's much better, okay. Now I have a name for my project over here. Let's span this out. Double click that and there we go. That's much better. Except now it says it's Java. Ugh. Why didn't it change that? Refactor, rename. See, this is the pain in the butt if you make that mistake and not name your project early on. Acme. Uh, let's see, is that my, oh, that's my, so it'll be Acme calculator or cylinder, I'm sorry. Cylinder, apply rename to all comments, yes. Okay, so now let's see what my file is called. Same thing, I gotta rename it, refactor is what it's called. And then I'll go to rename and it'll be Acme Cylinder for the name. That's much better, much better. Okay, so I can clean this up real quick, get rid of all the Java doc stuff that we don't need right now and move our braces so that they line up. Again, this is just me being anal. I like when these line up. And I can even indent this some by going right up here. That way it's cleaner. I can see from here to here, there's nothing in between here. And from here to here, there's nothing here. I can get rid of this for now. 
And now I'm up at the top with my internal documentation. And my project again was gonna be project, will be Acme. Acme cylinder calculator, something like that. The file name or this is Acme cylinder dot Java. Today's date is eight slash twenty five twenty twenty. The author is me. And the purpose will be this. <sighs> of a cylinder given user input of the radius and length. Something to that effect. I'm gonna indent all this too, so it's inside this. Again, this is indentation here. Again, this is a block comment. Okay, I can do a block or the two slashes is the one that you do a line of comments. Okay. Now, right up here in my purpose, it already says that I, the user is going to give me inputs. Well, if the user is going to give me inputs, I have to have a scanner. So import Java utilities. Look at that. Again, look at all these things I can do that somebody already wrote the code for that I can bring into my program. Again, these are like blueprints. It doesn't make a scanner yet. It just says how to make a scanner, okay? Then down here inside of my uh, main, I'm actually going to make the scanner. And I think today I'll call it user in, capital I and in, in, camel hump. And it's a new scanner. And I'm going to get, the, where am I getting the data from? System what? The, the keyboard? Yeah, the keyboard, and what's that called? In. In, yep. Again, system out is what? The monitor. Yep, the monitor. Why am I getting? What's happening? Oh, it's small letter I. There we go. So this is where I actually Instantiate, instantiate is just a geeky term for create, in, create an instance of. So I instantiate the scanner object here, which allows me to get data from the keyboard. All right, let's, uh, so we could do here, I'm gonna split this um, two things I wanted to do with you is that um, I'm not going to leave this in here, but when we do procedural programming, there's three different types of things I can do. One is sequential. And that's what we're doing now. That's each line executes in order. Then there's selection, 
or decision. And this one, depending on uh, a condition, the code, the line either runs or doesn't. And the last one is repetition or sometimes called iteration. And depending on a condition, the uh, line can run or run multiple times or not at all. Okay. So those are, and when we do procedural programming, that's what we're doing, okay? So right now we're doing sequential programming. Every line in our program is executed. So later on in a couple of weeks, we're gonna do selection and decision. And we'll spend a couple of weeks on that. Then we'll do repetition and iteration. These are sometimes called if statements. And this one down here, sometimes you'll hear people call them loops. Okay. I'm just gonna leave that for you in there. It has nothing to do with this program. Okay, except that it's we're writing it sequentially. The next thing I'm gonna introduce is that most programs that are uh, at the, where we're at right now, I have three things, we call them IPO. IPO. And they have an input, a process, uh, and an output, okay? And sometimes we'll even know the output before we get the inputs. Depends on how you look at it. Uh, if I want the, I know that I need a calculation to calculate how long a trip will take me. Well, I kind of know what I want as an output, but then I have to go figure out what the process is and what inputs I need to get my final output. So what I'm gonna do in this program with you is I'm gonna actually say, well, let's do one thing first. Let's put a banner in. Uh, and we said this is the Acme uh, cylinder calculator. Okay, semicolon on the end. That looks good. And that should already run. If I hit the, and it does right there. Okay, so now to get mine to work, I need some inputs. So I'm gonna just say that I need inputs here. And to get my inputs, I need a prompt. So the first thing I'm gonna do is type in my prompt. And I just use print because I like my prompt for my user to be to the right of my prompt. If you use print line, your prompt will prompt and then the user will put in below that. Oh, uh, how do I want to say this? What is the radius? Yeah. Or maybe it should say enter the rate. Yeah. Enter. More specific. Enter the radius of the cylinder. Again, you might have noticed this. This just means we haven't used it yet. See, it says variable user in has not been used yet. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll use it one time here. 
Now, my radius, what data type is it going to be? Somebody that hasn't answered this morning. I'm waiting. Are you guys here? Here, I have no idea. Double. Double. You have no idea. Okay, so two, I heard two people say double. Why? Explain why you chose double. Uh, the user might want to an, enter uh, a radius that is less than uh, a whole number. There you go. So if I make it an int, it has to be, let's say we're talking in feet or whatever. I could put in 10 feet, but I couldn't put in 10 and a half feet. Okay. So I'm going to use double so I can put in 10 and a half feet. And I'll just call it radius. And that's going to be a sign. That's the assignment character, not an equal sign. And I'm going to say user in dot next. And it was double, right? Just like that. And here I'm. Okay, so my next question is, what do you think we should do next? I got the radius. Uh, now you should ask for the height. Yeah, the height or the length or. Do you want to make it height? We can do that. So there's my prompt. I think it's a pretty good prompt. And again, do we want it to be an integer or a double? Int. You're going to go with an int? What if it's 10 and a half feet tall? And then you go with the double? Yeah. So again, it's user in dot next double. Uh, again, if you're putting in a uh, string, it's just next. Let me go back here. I'll show you some of the options. So these are the options here, some of them. Okay, so you got next in, next. And then we'll talk more about these when we get to loop. But down here, you can see it says next. That's for string. Okay, those are for strings. So if you're trying to get somebody's name, it'll just be the word next. If it's a number, usually it's uh, the number spelled out. Well, I guess you could have next int. So, so that gets Okay, what, let's go up here and add this up here. And I'm gonna tab over. Let's do it this way, I guess. Don't want to confuse you. Okay, so that's the formula we're going to use. So what are we missing right now to do our calculation? The constant? Yep, the constant pi, right? 
So we can go here. And what keyword do I use to make a constant? Final. Yeah, final. And will it be a double or an integer? Double. Double. Yeah. And again, it doesn't matter. If I do that, it's still going to work. But by convention, constants are all uppercase. So I'm going to make it like that. And that has to do with programmer friendliness. And I'll make it mine 3.14159. Boom, like that. So this is what we have so far. Now, some programming, uh, sometimes people say, well, if you plan this out right, I could have declared all my variables up here. I could have said, or up by final up here somewhere. I could have just said that, and then I could have said double radius, double height, and then double volume, something like that. And that's what some people, I don't have a problem with you doing that, okay? I do have you, uh, your book will show you this, which I will have a problem with because it, what you're doing uh, currently is learning, and I would prefer that you declare all your variables separate from one another. But it is legal to do this later on in your life, radius, height, and volume. And that would work. <coughs> Again, I personally don't like it. And then I would have to get rid of the double. You don't re, the reason this is screaming at me, if you see red like this, that's a problem. If you see red underlines, that's a problem. What it's yelling at me for right now is that I'm trying to re um, initialize a something that's already been initialized. So if I want to declare them up here, I would have to do something like this. Okay, now it would work fine. Okay, but I'm just gonna go back to the way I was because I like it better the other way. And I'm just doing the undo thing. Then I'm back to where I was. So I got everything I need to do my calculation now. So I'm just gonna make it again, a double volume is equal to pi. Notice if I do pi like that, that's wrong because we're case sensitive. So it has to be pi like that times, and I could do radius, radius, or I can do the math power and then radius and the number two here. Radius raised to the second power and then space times height. Okay, so here I'm using Okay, so some functions are used so much that instead of having them to where we had to declare it up here as an import, okay, it's already built in in most versions of Java. So I can just come down here and say, yeah, I wanna use the math library um, like this. Okay. Then we're gonna go down here. So let's see. So we had our inputs there. I think this line right here is our process.
And then the next line we deal with here will be our output. And later on, we're gonna break these down into, right now we're gonna put a lot of code in the main, but we don't really wanna do that. Later on, we'll talk about procedures or methods. And what we wanna do is put most procedures do one thing and do it well. They, for example, they would get inputs and that's all. Then you would have the process. It, that's all it would do is process the data. And then your output would be the information that's created from processing that data, okay? So later on, we'll break these all down into their own procedures. Uh, so this one's gonna be system dot out dot print line. And the volume your cylinder is and then space dot volume plus space cubic units. So it really doesn't matter if they're feet, inches, yards, meters, because all I did is specify that it's cubic units. Now, of course, these would, your linear units here too, would have to be the same. So let's see if this thing works. And normally how I would test this is I'm gonna use 10 because 10, uh, because it's radius times radius, so that'll give me a hundred. And then it's I'm gonna make it 10 feet long. So that makes it a thousand, 10 times 10 times 10, times 3.14159. And that should be 3,141 and 59 uh, cubic units. So I, I, I tested it with something I know. If you test it with something or you want to make sure it works, you can go over here and go to Google and type in cylinder uh, calculation or something like that, anything like that. Come over here and let's say if I do the 10, 10 here, I can check. And you can see they get the same thing we do. So now I can further check it. I can say 11.5 uh, here and 12.3 here. And I get approximately this. I go back to my program and I run it. And I say 11.5 and what was the other one? 12.3, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And I get 511035, basically, if I round up, which is the same thing they got. If I don't get this, one of two things is wrong. Either, either Google is wrong or I'm wrong. In most cases, I would bet that I'm wrong. Okay, so now I would have to go back and figure out what I had done wrong. Okay, so this would be like, it's kind of like beta testing, okay, in a small scale. If you don't know what that term means, it's uh, what they do, like when Microsoft is going to come out with a new product, they send it to certain people, people that have said, yeah, you know, you give me a free copy of a program and I'll try it for a while and I'll report back to you if I have any problems with it. Okay. So that's kind of what we're doing here, but we're doing it ourselves. You know, you're going to run your program, see if it works, run it again, see if it works, try to put stuff in and see if it crashes. In other words, if I was doing a division here, 
I would want to make sure that my program later on doesn't crash if the second number is zero, because I can't divide by zero. I can divide into zero. I can say zero divided by two, but I cannot say two divided by zero. That's against the laws of algebra or mathematics. So later on in our programs, we will make sure that they cannot divide by zero. All little things like that come into play. Okay. Let me just whip through the chapter here. Make sure that we have, oh, we, let's finish this up here. Let's see here. So I'm going to actually put in a cute little ending thing here. That just says system dot out dot print line. One, two, three, four, five. You can put in, you don't have to use equal signs. Put whatever you want there. Do that. And so that gets rid of that. I'm gonna close up all this space here. I don't need it. And then down here somewhere, put another comment that basically no code follows. And again, in a small program like this, this is kind of, but if you have, you know, 100,000 lines, um, that's a good thing. Oh, and let's put one here too. This one will be, and again, as we get more procedures, you'll have more of these lines going across here. So this is the main, it's a void, and I'll explain that as we go on throughout the class. So I think that's a nice little program, a few notes in there for you. We go ahead and save that. And again, if you forget, if you save, then you go ahead and you can close this if you want. Go to your, wherever you save to, you can see mine here, the Acme Cylinder 1. I right click it. I say send to compressed. I don't even open it. I do not go into it, whatever. And then I go over to um, go over to my uh, Blackboard site. Go to my portfolio. Go into it, add a file, type cylinder, go down to browse, go to uh, Acme cylinder, the one that's zipped up. You can tell it's compressed. You can see the zipper there. If you got a small icon, go like that, hit submit, and it should be in there. Okay, that's how you do it. And then if you want, let's say you wanna work on it later, you can delete this one and put in a different one. Okay. Let me show you a couple other little things. Okay, so if I right click on this, I can close this one and start on a new one, okay? If I want to, uh, do that. Again, if you're not seeing your stuff here, you just expand these out. If you come in here and it's blank, you expand it out and just double click the file when you get to it. Uh, try not to put spaces in your names because then you're going to get periods or dots in between every word. 
There's nothing wrong with it, but it just makes it a little more cumbersome. Okay. The chapter talks about variables. Again, again my uh, definition of a variable is the name, place, and memory to store data that may change during program execution. Likewise, a constant is a name, place, and memory that cannot, not may, but cannot change during program execution. And one thing we should do is by convention, uh, we make the name of our constants all uppercase, all uppercase. Again, an equal sign is an assignment character. We read these backwards. For example, this one would be 3.14159 is assigned to a variable of the double type called pi. This one here, some type of user double is gonna be assigned to a variable with the name height, that's a double, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? That's normally how we read those. Um, the book talks about naming conventions and uh, some of this stuff, uh, like our class here. Classes are usually book title capitalization. In other words, the word ACME is capitalized and cylinder is capitalized. And it will do it automatically for you. If you name your project that way, your class will become that way automatically for now. Remember that your package is always in lowercase, the whole thing. That's just a convention. Variable names, they're single word. We'll do them like this. If they're more than one word, you do this, and then the second part of the word will be like this. Next double, where the second part is uppercase, the second word, or any subsequent word. Uh, talks about the operators. <clears throat> Um, when I say modulus, what does that mean? What is modulus? The remainder of when you, uh, you divide a number into another number. Yeah, like the modulus of 12 divided by 7. What's the modulus of 12 divided by 7? Anybody that hasn't said anything. Twelve divided by seven. What's the modulus? Five. Five. That's correct. Yep. Five. Again, it's the remainder. Your book calls it the remainder, but the technical name for it is the modulus. And what is the symbol for modulus? In other words, if I want to find out what the remainder is, what do we use? Like a percent? Yeah, it's a percent sign. So I'm going to just type down below here because I don't want to open up another screen. So if I did something like uh, remainder, oh, come on, Doug, you're in the wrong. Remainder is equal to, 12 modulus 5, okay, this would, what? 2. 2, yep. How about this one? Uh, anybody? Uh, 
two. Yep. How about this one? Somebody? Two. Yep, two again. How about this one? Two point five. Yeah, two point five. These two in here. Integer division because they're both integers. Okay, so this is so that's that. Just going through here, do your book. Again, um, if you have a question on the order, things should be executed, you put a, use parentheses. There's nothing wrong with using parentheses. Okay. Uh, Incrementation and decrementation. So we can do things like this. We can say uh, counter is equal to the counter plus one. So we're adding every time something happens, we add one to it. So if we start off here, let me do this. Let me actually put it in there. Um, so then if I do this, Excuse me.
So there's three different ways to increment a counter or a variable. You have the old, and there's nothing wrong with using any one of these three. This one here raises it by one. This one here also raises it by one. So all three of these raise the counter by one. And I can do the same thing with minus signs and make them go down, okay? So in other words, if I do, I got this cowder here, that's like a counter, okay? And likewise, I can do these. One of these is a little bit different because those only deal with one. This one here will raise it by one. This one here decrements it by one. So what if I want more than one? Well, then I either have to use this one or this one. So I could do this if I want to add three, for example. Right? So you can do all those different things there. And likewise, you know, you can decrement. So those are shown in this chapter. If you're confused, you use this one up here. And similarly, you could do down here, doesn't really matter. You could do right. Okay, the rest of the chapter I think is examples of case studies. So you should be good. Um, so this is one of the assignments and probably on Thursday we'll come back and I'll pick another assignment and We'll do it in class and it'll be like a five point extra credit uh, that you'll turn in. But you do have, uh, let's look here. So due next Monday, we have, uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit, again, this is my warning. Make sure you spell Celsius and Fahrenheit correctly. Okay. And when you go to check your Celsius and Fahrenheit, okay, I will give you this in. If 
if uh, Fahrenheit is negative, I'm sorry, if negative, if Fahrenheit is negative 40, what will Celsius be? Anybody know? If Fahrenheit is negative 40, what will Celsius be? I think it's negative 40 also. It is, you're correct. At negative 40 in both scales, they're the same temperature. But let's say I didn't know that. How about if Fahrenheit's at 32, what will Celsius be? If Fahrenheit's at 32, what will Celsius be? Again, Celsius is based on water. Zero. It'll be zero, okay? How about 212 Fahrenheit? What will Celsius be? 100. Yep, 100. Same thing, so you're gonna check it. You're gonna run your program, and if it doesn't come out to those, something's wrong, okay? Be careful in this one. Again, you're gonna have those calculations that either have a five divided by nine or nine divided by five. What are you gonna make sure? Okay, again, if I go over here and I make nine divided by five, what am I gonna get for an answer? One. One. Do I want one? No. No, because nine divided by five in floating point is 1.8. And believe me, if you wanna calculate your temperature, your 98.6, if you make it nine divided by five, uh-oh, you're gonna be dead. <coughs> All right, so you need to use uh, one of the nine or the five or both of them has to have a decimal point when you run that program or when you do that program. Cost of driving, again, it's not too hard. How many miles? You're gonna ask them, how many miles do you wanna go? I would guess it's gonna be an integer. Um, most of the time when we do miles per gallon in a car, it's an integer. We don't say, oh, my car goes 22.5 miles on a gallon of gas. And then price per gallon will be what? A double. A double. double. Yep. So your ultimate answer will be a double. Okay. The cost of driving, your answer, what it costs you in money will be a decimal, or not a decimal, a double. Okay, so just make sure you're aware of that. Uh, just some, you know, things that you should live by if you're a programmer, that's what that is. And I covered the chapter, so we're good. Um, we're done a little bit early. I'm gonna go back to uh, stop sharing. And any questions? Yeah, I had a question. Um, I didn't really. Uh, it was about the when you had a a this name string uh, assigned to double. Would that you can't do that. Yeah, um, I was wondering what would happen. Would it It'd crash? Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Was it would... program like if you tried to put something here? I'll show you this real quick here. I was curious about get my program here. So if I run this question was is if I try to put a string. Okay, so if I type. Uh, Oh, you know what? The radius is 10. That's what happens. And you can see right here, I get the first line. It says you have an input mismatch. That's because I can't put a string or a literal, an alphanumeric literal in a number. And I said that I want, I was trying to get a double in there. Okay. Actually, what I was asking, because I didn't know that, but uh, 
I didn't know it crash with that. But what I was asking was, um, if you like, you had a double when you were showing all the um, the different. ways that you could assign to a scanner, a scanner types, I think. Yeah. Uh, there's one called the next. Yeah. Uh, it was also a double. Nope. It's next double. If you only use the word next, then it's a string. And if, if it was just next. Then you can put anything line, you want in. It wouldn't do anything weird with it also being a double. No, it's a different oh. variable here. Oh. Watch this. Oops. Jeez. Now, if I run it, I'll save it and run it. it. Says, "What is your name?" Oh, I made it a. This is. Let's put Doug there. And then you can see here it prints out Doug. The volume of your cylinder is three point one four one five nine. But that's just because I put print line up here. Now, if I run it, it's the way I had it. There you go. So does next only work if it's a string name? It can be any string here. Um, four, let's say your name is 49GZ exclamation point. <laughs> because I can put anything I want in a string. Yeah, because um, when you had a name assigned <coughs> to a string, I was wondering what would happen if you uh, had, if you instead of using string, you tried to use double with uh, the scanner type user in next. Did that crash it? No, I mean, this just, you declare the user in here next. Oh yeah, okay, if I put this like this. Yeah. Notice what, what pops up right away. Oh, uh, okay. So that means that it would just not work? Wouldn't work. Okay. Because it knows I'm trying to get a double, but I'm asking for a string. Understand okay. what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I was, I was wondering if that nope. would that it won't let you do it just... won't let you do that. Won't let you do that. Anybody else? Okay, you're free to go and I will see you on Thursday. Thank you, sir. I will I will try to get uh, your stuff from week one graded as quickly as I can, okay? And I do have an office hour starting at 11, I believe it is. So anybody, if you're doing something, wanna come back, I'll be here until just about noon, I think it is. So again, Bye. you're free to go. Thank you and have a good day. You too. Have a good one. Yep. Ladies. See ya. All right, bye.
Tristan, you got a quite oh, there you go. And Paul? Uh, I just wanted to say have a good day. Okay, you too, buddy. Thank you. Bye-bye.